All right, so by popular demand, we have the Vultures items from the very first drop. We got this just over a month after we placed the order. We have the one box tee here, as well as the Yeezy black pant. So full disclosure, I've already kind of looked at these. It's very interesting what he's done here. What we'll do is we'll take a look at each item first, then we'll try them on and we'll cut them up after. And I'll talk about what I think these costs to make. We're gonna go with the shirt first. This is their one box tee. And as you can see, it is literally just a box. Looking at this initially, what I think he did with these is, if you actually look at the width of this, it's just about 29 inches. So when it comes to fabric rolls themselves, you can knit them and rolls sometimes come up to 60 inches. What I actually think he did with these is this is either an experiment in no waste manufacturing or how can we get these cheaply made as possible, which, you know, for selling for 20 bucks, I think they're 28 now, you kind of have to. But what I think he actually did was just take the entire roll, cut one seam in the center, and then cut across, and then you're basically just taking the fabric and folding it over, and this is how he gets this tee. It's very simple in terms of its pattern. I really actually don't even think they even made a pattern for these. I think he's just bulk cutting these and just chalking them out. You can see over here, see the seam on the side here versus over here. So there's clearly no quality control being done on these, and it is a little bit tapered, but I, I think a lot of this is really just being done freehand. So if you're looking for quality, this is not where you're gonna find it. Can you make quality shirts and sell them for 20 bucks? You can. There is a one logo on the back. There is no care label on the inside. So I actually have no idea where these are being made. There is one label here, but this is for identifying it prior to garment dyeing. If you really think of the pattern of this, it's almost like a pillowcase with two armholes. I'm pretty sure the armhole depth is probably not even the same. In. 10 and a quarter. So if we look even at the armholes themselves, this is 11 inches and this is 10 and a quarter. So the armhole on the right side is smaller. Again, if there was an experiment on how cheaply could you make a piece of clothing and have it still considered passable as clothing, this would be it. There's a screen print down the center. You can see the plastic all they use is not even the greatest, it just cracks. So it's pretty cheap screen print. The neck ribbing itself, it's, it's quite loose. It's actually not well color matched with the body fabric itself. In terms of the fabric itself, I actually wouldn't say the fabric's that bad. It's like that heavyweight, street wear, enzyme washed, vintage kind of feel fabric. So I would say the fabric supplier is, is not the worst fabric I've ever seen. Here's the one on the inside. In terms of constructing the garment, we have the rajas here and then we have just the two side seams. So you can imagine in terms of making this garment, you're gonna take the roll of fabric, you're gonna cut it linearly down the center, then you're gonna cut it across, and then you just have two side seams, which they're just finishing at like whatever angle <laughs> because the armholes are different sizes on these. And then you're just cutting out for the neck ribbing, a very quick garment to make. I love Yeezy, listened to his music growing up, I appreciate what he's trying to do with uh, fashion. But when I look at this, and when you see the pant next, I think he's really leveraging his relationship with his fans to put out a product that's really subpar here. And then next, we have the black pants. These are absolutely ridiculous. In terms of how they actually made, again, I don't know if this was his intent, was to explore kind of like low waste manufacturing because when you're typically cutting out a pattern piece for fabric, you are having a little bits and pieces here and there that are actually tossed because they don't end up as a final part of the garment. But if you look at this pants here, there is the center seam and then the leg seams. Looking at this pattern, it's basically folded out like this. I think he took the entire cuttable width of the fabric, just basically roughly chalked out the outline of the pants and then just cut them. This is supposed to be their smallest size. The waistband here, 40 inches. So, let me take this here. This is the waist on this pant. A little ridiculous. There's no pockets on this. They have these little shitty bungee cords. The Kaisenat, it straight up just falls off you. So, he wasn't hating, he was just purely just 
reviewing the pair of pants. The fabric itself, I actually don't mind. So again, the fabric supplier for both of these items, it's soft, it's a diagonal terry, I can see because you can see it on the surface of fabric, and then they brush it to make it a fleece. It's quite soft. I think the color, even though they don't match really well, this is definitely a, a warmer black, and this is a cooler black in terms of there's a lot more blue hues. We have a reflective screen print here, barely on there. And then they have one on the inside as well. One very interesting thing in terms of the construction of this garment, there's a section from here to here, the thread here, so all this thread, is completely different than the rest of the garment. <laughs> they really messed up in terms of sewing this garment and this line was probably off. Then they cut it and then they sewed it again to fix it. But again, this thread is different than the thread from the rest of the garment. Plus in terms of the actual stitch, the stitch is also different. Pretty confident these are probably freehand, like chalked up to make. I think it went like this, then they had to trim it and then sew this so they actually have a proper bottom seam. In terms of the construction of the waistband, this is just the body fabric rolled over. And then they of course insert the bungee. They have the eyelets for the bungee cords. So if you actually look at the positioning, let's use the center seam. The bungee cords actually push this way. So that's not even centered on this one too. No care label, no tags. I have no idea where this is made. So it's gonna be a little harder to price these because I don't have any of that information, which as an apparel brand, you actually need to have that information. Let's give them a try on so you guys can see how ridiculous these fits are. And then we'll come back and we'll, we'll take it apart and dive into these a little bit more. So I can appreciate the style and aesthetic of this tee, but I would say in terms of the fabric itself, it's really nothing too special. These pants, however, are absolutely ridiculous. First of all, they're not fit or tapered at all. They come with these weird bungee cords and Kais and I was not joking because they just fall right down <laughs> because they are not tapered to the waist at all. Also, there's no pockets on these pants. So I don't know how you make pants without pockets, especially for, for guys because we don't have anywhere to carry our stuff. Overall, I'm really not impressed with the products he's created. I get it, he's trying to sell it for 20 or $28, I think now they move prices up, but this could have been executed significantly better. All right, so we're back. As you can see, the fit on these are a little ridiculous. Let me cut these apart so just so you can see how these are actually made. And then I'll give you my kind of final thoughts on these. Let's start on the shirt. So again, this is gonna be a really quick in terms of taking these apart, the one side seam. Okay, so as you can see, in terms of the construction, that is it. Two side seams, the hole for your neck and your ribbing, as well as the screen print. Again, if I take the measurement from this seam, this seam, it is, and I'm taking the roll, it is 30 inches. Going off what I said earlier, I'm pretty sure all they did was take a roll of fabric slice it right down the middle and then just slice it across to get the fabric for this. If you look at the side seam again, they're quite off on both sides. I think this is just really being freehand cut to pump these out. He, I think he posted he got $18 million worth of orders the first day or second day. You'd have to imagine after a few, he's probably got 20 million plus orders. So that's a million garments he has to fulfill. It took a month to get these. So I can almost guarantee whatever factory is making these are just running 24 seven and there's zero quality control being done and they're just really just pumping these products out. It's gonna be hard to say what this particular one will cost to make just because there's no care label on this. I have no idea where this is made. I mean, you know, just by seeing the fabric and feeling, it's definitely 100% cotton. And I know it's probably garment dyed to get this aesthetic. So without the care label on these, we really don't know where this is manufactured. It could be made and milled in another country and just finished in the US, it could be completely made in the US, could be completely made in another country. This didn't even come with a poly bag or hang tags. It was just two garments stuffed in a bag. I'm, it's gonna be hard to say what this costs to make, but I'm gonna say between four and $6. So that is the shirt. Let's take a look at the pants. These pants are absolutely ridiculous. So I'm gonna show you how easy it is to make these pants. So let's pull up the drawstring first. So here is the drawstring. It is a bungee cord. When I see a drawstring like this, 
for the weight of this pants. You know, you can have a bungee drawstring on some pants, but you obviously need to construct it differently. This bungee cord is way too thin for pants like this. It's literally going to be doing nothing. So there's the bungee cord. So let's flip this over and I will show you how this is made. So it's gonna be one seam down the center. Okay, so as you see, it was quite easy to take this apart. This is just one giant panel piece. I think they did the exact same thing they did with the shirt. They took the full cuttable width of the fabric. And then what they did is they cut one cut across and that's gonna be the top of the waistband. And I can almost guarantee you, it's also the bottom of the previous pant leg. And then they just did one, two, three, four, five, six, six lines and six cuts to make this. So if you're making pants, typically you'll have a front and back seam you'll have a left and right panel four panels in total it allows you to shape fabric around your body more however they did this one giant panel so that's why it fits like a tube because you can't actually taper a garment like this because of how this panel piece is made this is straight across the top straight across the bottom so there's the pants Again, no care label, no idea where it's being made, no size marking, nothing. We got the one vultures screen print. Again, this could be made in any country and brought in. The fabric itself isn't the worst I've ever seen. You know, be probably making these maybe for $10. <laughs> like, I'm kind of at, at a loss for words reviewing these. You know, when it comes to clothing, clothing, it needs to do one of two things. It needs to be either be functional you know, that can be, let's say, Carhartt pants. Those are very functional, but also a $5 t-shirt is functional because it serves the purpose of covering yourself while being still affordable. Or clothing needs to be designed to invoke an emotion, where the emotion is pride in the wearer, confidence in the wearer, or invoke emotions of, from others in terms of what they perceive when people are wearing this. When I really look at what's been done with these two garments that I have in front of me, I don't think they achieve either of them. They're not functional because, first of all, without this drawstring, you can't even wear these pants because they just fall off. There's no pockets. Same thing with this shirt. It's just really poorly constructed. So it's not functional and doesn't invoke emotion. And I think without this coming from Kanye, him leveraging the goodwill that he's kind of gathered with his audience over the years, nobody would buy this. It's hard for me to say this because like, I love the guy, I've grown up with him. And I think a lot of the, some of the greatest fashion designers have apprenticed under him. But it's hard for me to say this is anything more than just a cash grab because this is not something you're going to be, if you have any other pants in your closet, you are not wearing these. I can guarantee you that. And the shirt, I would say it's a little more passable, but you saw how poorly constructed it is. There's no quality control on these. We have no idea where these are made. I would not recommend anyone buy these, even though it's 20 or $28 now. This is purely just an exploration on how cheaply a garment can be made and still be passable, to be honest. The only saving grace from these is the fabrics are somewhat decent, at least. I, I Man, this, this is like, I think I'm coming to terms of what's actually happening here in terms of what he's putting out for his audience. You know, I don't know who's in a supply chain that, that made these. It's so hard to, I don't even like, Don't buy these, save your money. Kanye, these are not products that you should be putting out. I think you know that this isn't very fashionable. This isn't a quality product. And ultimately this isn't anything more than a cash grab. Yeah, I, I get the idea and you, you wanted to execute on products for 20 to $28 uh, to make it affordable, to bring Yeezy to, to more masses, but with a lot more planning, you can get products at that price point that are significantly better than this. I think that's what you should be doing because 
people are buying this because of all the goodwill and all the memories and everything that you've created for them over the years. But this is just, this is just a waste of fabric. There you have it. This is a, definitely a different episode of what it costs. See you next time. And this is like, I'm just like flabbergasted. If you guys want to see more of these type of videos and more on what goes on behind the scenes of fashion, don't forget to subscribe and check out these videos.